My role at Daytona State College is to serve as the entrepreneur in residence for the Entrepreneurial Mindset Opportunity Initiative. Thanks to Dr. Cheryl Weems and the faculty here at the college, I have been organizing and facilitating professional development opportunities for faculty. The faculty can use these professional development opportunities as a resource to gain new knowledge and new wisdom that they can apply directly into the classroom. And what better opportunity than to take the concepts of entrepreneur mindset and help students activate the entrepreneur in them. The reason I'm participating in the EMO initiative is that when this idea was presented to me, I got very excited. Um, I come from an entrepreneurial background and I think it is exactly what our students need today. So whenever you know the idea came across, I, I was one of the first ones to volunteer. Um, in fact, which got me the role of the faculty lead <laughs> for it. So I was very excited for it. Um, and of course, my excitement has, you know, leaked into the students. They're excited about it, um, which just shows that, you know, it is what our students need today, this entrepreneurial mindset, um, you know, for their future careers. I know I need this. You know, I am looking to be an entrepreneur. I am looking to own my business um, and I I googled <laughs> before I accepted and said I would and I'm like it that's what I need yes it's a yes so here I am <laughs> if you talk to any business in the community that the number one skill set that they need want desire are workers who can think for themselves, think for the whole company, don't look just at their job, but look at it overall. And, and those soft skills that they're referred to as are the same skills that an entrepreneur needs to be successful in their own business. And really the entrepreneurial mindset is a self-directed value uh, creation. So what we have in all my classes, I give them three promises. I promise them that they'll never be bored, They'll always be challenged, and I'm always going to push them beyond their comfort zone to grow personally and professionally. And so what we do and how I integrated this in all my classes, and you're talking about 12 classes that I teach, is having them work on integrated community-based service learning projects, and they are self-organizing teams. So I give them a foundation of what the basis, this is what I want them to create, and then they have to pick what projects they want to work on, who's going to do what, and they organize with that. This particular mindset training is the one that we had found, like I said, a couple of years back as well, that is just, it's not necessarily about getting startup capital or you know some of those other intricacies that will happen later. This is about making entrepreneurship accessible. My biggest issues that I always had in the back of my head was, you know, do I know how to do this? Can I do this? Well, you know, is there information out there that'll tell me, hey, you know, is there a clear answer, a clear path to take? And it was good to know that a lot of these entrepreneurs had that same issue, but, you know, they took action and they jumped into it. Um, and, you know, they didn't know the answer to the problems. They didn't know, you know, what the solution was, but they said, hey, let me, you know, start this, see where it goes, and I'll tackle the problems and, you know, cross those issues and cross that path when I get there. The story of Ice House, if you've not read it, you really should. Everyone, when I finished reading that book, I wanted to buy it for everybody so they would read it. And it's this beautiful story of how choice and attitude and all those things matter in either building a successful business or being a successful employee or just being uh, more comfortable in your skin as you navigate through things. Being able to speak directly with established entrepreneurs in the Daytona Beach business community is really an awesome feeling. It makes you, it gives you insight that one, it's never too late to pursue your dreams that you have, um, and two, there are persons who have already tried and true methods, so you are learning from them. Plus, some of the insight that you may have within you, being able to voice those concerns and get a feedback, then it tells you if you're on the right path or what you need to tighten up on. So it's really a blessing really to be able to speak with established entrepreneurs who have failed and rised above the challenges and are now on a successful path to give you that insight and information. I think going through this I've been um, pleasantly surprised 
by the number of students. Like when we first started talking about this and I went into the classrooms, I said, you know, to brought out this idea, who would be interested, you know, in an entrepreneurial education and training thing. So many hands went up and I'm like, wow. Because I thought at first like, oh, I might struggle to get 20 students, you know. And then we had double that number and I was very surprised. And I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised um, because I know when I was going through cosmetology school, yeah, in the back of my mind, I thought, yeah, one day I would like to own my own salon. But I didn't have that initiative in school. I mean, in school, my one-year goal was to finish school <laughs> and, you know, to get my license. But I've been very surprised um, with, you know, their passion, with how much they want this, and, and it is their goal. And the questions, like, we've had wonderful speakers come in, and they are full of questions, great questions. And it really, I mean, I sit in the back and I'm just all smiles because I'm just amazed at the questions that they come up with. And and every time we have a speaker and I ask them, what else do you want? And they always have ideas for the next speaker. So we have more lined up and they're very excited and that's what makes me excited. Is there, is it ever too late to develop and pursue a dream? I am a mom of a 30 year old and a 20 year old and my life has been a little different. I'm now in the United States, but I've had a passion for technology all my life. And I am determined to leave a legacy for my children. One of the most important ingredients is to have that passion you believe in yourself, you know you have a passion for something, now you just have to take the next step, right? So when you come to venues like this, take advantage. You know, don't, don't just say, hey, thank you very much, great presentations by you professionals. Meet us, give us your information, because I, I may know somebody who's looking for exactly what you're looking for, and I can tell you, we, we all have that one person, and we can say, hey, I think I might have a candidate that you might enjoy having in your company because she sounds really passionate. Take it from there, right? So my answer is, no, it's never too late. Until you stop breathing and you're pronounced dead, um, I think you have an opportunity, okay? Yeah, I was 45 when I started my business and had four little kids. So certainly it's never too late. And even today I keep starting new businesses. So don't let your age be an obstacle. You're only as young as you feel. Like we have a choice of how we think. I'm having more fun in my 50s than I ever did at any other time of my life. So go for it. The entrepreneurial mindset uh, opportunity or initiative is to help the students realize and recognize that some of them may go out and start their own companies as business owners, uh, like I've done, but others may go to work for companies. And so the concept of entrepreneur mindset transcends both of those spectrums that a potential student may choose to go down. And what, how valuable is it, it's extremely valuable for a student to uh, be a problem solver, to show up on time, to carry themselves in a professional way, to think critical about challenges that are going to come up either as a business owner or as an employee for a company. So the idea is that by having the entrepreneurial mindset inside of them and activated, they'll be able to rise to the occasion when challenges are presented to them. They'll be able to stand out and help the company that they're working for go and grow to the next level and stay relevant. Welcome, you guys, to Daytona State College. Thank you for your patience this morning, for coming out to spend a little bit of time with us as we talk about entrepreneurial mindset. So what does entrepreneurial mindset mean to you as a business owner? I'm Sans Lassiter. I'm the president of Lassiter Transportation Group, LTG. Um, my opinion about entrepreneurial mindset is that it takes uh, someone who's not afraid to step out and uh, do something they're uh, out of, maybe out of their typical comfort zone, but they need to be able to pick a goal and stick with it. You asked the question about the entrepreneurial mindset, and I really think it begins with having an idea that you want to do something different, that you don't want 
to work for someone else, that you are self-directed and feel like that you could make it on your own. Um, so it, first it takes that, and then it takes a lot of persistence. Uh, my latest business I've had for 10 years, and I'll tell you, it was just slogging through some days. But the truth is, it's worth it. We really all have to slog sometimes, so don't get discouraged when you are in that space. Um, and just keep on going. Just keep on going. Um, because whenever you have a vision, you kind of see the end, right? But all that stuff in the middle is the stuff that really counts. So a little bit you know, about my story, I didn't even finish high school, um, but I knew that I wanted so much more. So I took every opportunity that was put in front of me and tried to make something of it. And then two, like, kind of like what Nancy touched on, just making sure that even on those bad days, you keep your end goal in mind and just keep putting one foot in front of the other because that's what's gonna get you to that end goal. Um, and two, knowing that there's no real like finishing point. You're never gonna get to this point and go, all right, I'm done, I made it. It's more like the journey is kind of part of that whole end game. The, the entrepreneurial mindset is important in business because there's always a problem to solve. And I think that's the probably the defining characteristic of all of the entrepreneurs that I've met in my life. Their business launched because there was some problem they needed to solve. And it's not necessarily a new invention or a new product, it might be just a new way of doing things. And that is the, for me, the key to the entrepreneurial mindset. One of the other things that's awesome about entrepreneurial mindset is I call it the three P's. You know, everyone here is about the four P's of marketing, but I call it the three P's, and I, and I also say uh, it, you have to apply the three P's in this chronological order, and that is purpose, so you have to know your purpose. Uh, planning, and planning covers business plan, doing your market research, and after that is passion. So if you can do those three things in that order, uh, you will have it pretty much going for yourself. Uh, and you will also be able to solve a problem and you'll also be creating jobs. And so when we're faced with problems, how do we find solutions, right? We don't let problems stop us dead in our tracks. We say, okay, uh, this is a challenge, but it's a challenge that I can find solutions to. And that, that's an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur thinks that way. You act that way. You want to be that way. And so how you then carry yourself um, in the real world as either a business owner or as an employee, um, you actually become more valuable to the company you work for or to the company that you own yourself. Welcome everybody, this is our actual, our first live face-to-face -face, um, meeting and our first live face-to-face uh, -face -face speaker. Um, Sean Martin, the one and only uh, welder with the city of Daytona Beach. Uh, so he's going to talk a little bit about his uh, you know, journey through his career um, and some of the things he's done, uh, you know, an entrepreneurial mindset and uh, how that's helped him throughout his career. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to you. I guess it's me, huh? <laughs> All right, well, I started just like you guys did about, about 35 years ago. Went to school, learned how to be a welder and jumped into the trade. Now, I jumped into the business side of it first and I worked, to, worked at a welding supply company. But that, I thought I wanted that side of it, but I didn't. I went back into the field side of it. And I uh, welded in a booth and that wasn't satisfying. Being a welder is being able to create, build, Everything around you is put together by a welder. The world is put together by welders. Bridges, buildings, um, shopping carts. You know, anything that you look at is touched by a, a welder. So I said to myself, this is me, the creative side. So I was 19 years old. I came down here to ride my motorcycle for a week, and I went home and told my dad I'm moving to Daytona Beach, Florida. Yeah, I love being from Daytona. I love the history of the racing, and I love being able to share stories with people about how this relates to entrepreneurship. People might be like, hey, what are you talking about? Well, 
learning uh, how to be on the cutting edge of any sport, learning how to be competitive is in a lot of ways what we do in the world of business. You may not think you're in competition, but you are. And the things that you do, the disciplines that you take as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, the things you do that make you better, make you the difference between other businesses and other CEOs. So I think about it like this. When I set my routine for the day, what's on my mind a lot of times is what are the other top CEOs for furniture doing out there? I wanted to get a little bit of a feel for where you guys are at, but if you're creating a personal brand, you're doing marketing for yourself. That's really the bottom line. Um, I help clients do a holistic approach. I really believe strongly that marketing and public relations and communications all work together. The SBDC, we are part of Daytona State College, which is really cool because half of our funding comes from the SBA. Everybody's heard of the SBA, right? Especially during the pandemic. So they have huge amounts of money. They give us about half of our funding. The other half comes from the state college system. So that's why my office and all my base of operations are right here at the college. So it's a really great kind of partnership. So we have money to do the things we need to for small business. And like I always say, our rates are really good. They're free. I think there's some great synergy that's gonna be available for both the students and the entrepreneurs that are working with them to have some role models that they can see that they could aspire to being. And that skill set, once they have that, that can just take them in so many different ways. If, if they are not a risk taker and really don't wanna have their own company, but they wanna do something on the side, you know, which a, a lot of people, and when you think of how many businesses say they started in the garage or they started in whatever, and this gives them the, the tools that they would need to have that side gig and develop it if they want. So entrepreneurial, why did I get into this business? Specifically for that reason is that I chose that I wanted to have a lifestyle that I control. Okay, one of the reasons I'm here, probably the, the reason I'm here is not to uh, necessarily encourage people to go to be an entrepreneur, is to tell you the pitfalls of what not to do because I've done it all. You can't pick and choose and go, that's not my job. No, we look at it from a, a bigger picture and decide what needs to be done and truly the buck stops here. When I started the business, I was everything from janitor to president of the company and everything in between. If there's something that needs to be done in my business, if it's taking out the trash, I'm gonna do that if there's nobody else to, to do it or picking up trash in the parking lot. It doesn't matter. We can't be above doing something that's gonna help us succeed. Even, even you know, something is uh, like flying an airplane, right? I mean, there's, there's a risk to flying an airplane, but if you really, if you study everything you do and you become comfortable with it, the risk is mitigated. And that's really what we're doing with our business every day. And I think, you know, you'd made the comment about a COVID kind of sneaking up on us and taking us, we pivoted. We, we had to do what we had to do to, to get by and our business is stronger because of it. It was the middle of the recession. There were no jobs anywhere. So I just really sat down and said, how am I gonna do this? I'm in this little bitty small town. Everybody has an accountant. There are no new businesses starting because it's a terrible recession. How am I gonna make this work? And I, I did. We started marketing to people with tax liens and it grew from there. And today, instead of being a tiny little bitty uh, tax prep firm in Deland, Florida, we do the entire state for IRS problem resolution, which then brings in clients for accounting and tax work. Uh, our first TV show aired on September 1st, and it was just the most incredibly proud moment I've had from a business standpoint. It's like, here, look what we did. We put this out there. So 10 days later, two planes flying to the World Trade Center and other places around the United States, and everything came to a halt. And so it, it but I had to be creative and okay, what am I gonna do now? So I actually found other opportunities 
from that standpoint, but I could have very easily thrown my head something, yeah, it's not gonna work. You know, and some of those have been working for other people and some of those have been working for myself and I've bounced back and forth between the two, but that entrepreneurial mindset has flowed through everything that we've done. So I would say to you, if you go out into a venture and it doesn't turn out like you would think or expect, that doesn't mean your journey's done. It just means you, you've got to turn somewhere and make a different decision. There was just a lot of like negligence going on in my uh, industry. So my father had a terrible home inspection, saw the process and was like, what is going on? This is, this is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the, the report was handwritten, the, uh, just everything about it just was like a, a guy with a tool belt just looking around your house and saying, hey, everything's fine. So, so we were like, this is a great opportunity. And that's, that's the word that I would like to highlight, is opportunity to try to uh, better the industry, better the, uh, the field, create more opportunities for, for everyone. And that really comes down to opportunity. You have an opportunity to make a difference. In our business, it's kind of, we think it's kind of unique because we're in, we're in the renewable energy business, right? And we, we love the idea of putting something on their home that's going to reduce the, the, the cost of fossil fuels, the use of fossil fuel. So we have an opportunity to make a difference. And the people that come with us, they, they, that's why they come with us. We, they say, hey, look, you know, I want to be involved in this. I want to be involved in this, this movement. So opportunity. We need to take our community seriously. It's um, great to have people around us, but we have to choose them wisely. There's no replacement for the experience of your community. They come to you with um, a lot of knowledge and have seen a lot of things that you don't have. So really build a team around yourself. I've done that in this business. I never did it in my other businesses. So I think that's part of the reason that I failed because I tried to do everything myself and you just can't. So this time I have a big tribe around me. They're awesome people, always um, encouraging, uplifting, and I've made good choices that way and it, it makes it much easier to be successful. And I wanna tie that back into the comment I made earlier about the entrepreneurial mindset being 24-7, 365. Your brand is, kind of, is what people think about when they think of you or your organization. Um, from the Daytona Regional Chamber standpoint, uh, I, my goal is for people when they hear our name to think that's the premier business advocacy organization in the region. My word is persistence and what a great word. Uh, two other words go with it, determination and consistency. Uh, to be able to pursue, pursue your goals, to be persistent on it, um, no matter how old you are. Elon Musk's mother was 60 years old when she started her business. My father was 51 and my father-in-law was 82 when he decided to venture into another business. So regardless, if you are able to be persistent, determined, and if you are consistent, then those will make you successful. You've come to this event. There's an opportunity here, but you don't take action. You can take good notes. You can have a good business plan, a great strategy, a growth strategy. But if you don't take action, you might as well just throw it away. It's just a dream, right? I dream a lot, right? But I can sit there and dream and nothing will happen. But if I take action, one step, one thing, think about it, you have 365 days in a year. If I just take one small action every day, I've just taken 365 actions. You're telling me that a few of those aren't gonna come to fruition for you? They will, I mean, inevitably. Right? And so taking action to me, as, as much as all these things have a value, if you don't take that first step to where you want to be, to what's in your mind, that dream you have, nothing's going to happen. So taking action is everything. The fact that Daytona State College is providing a opportunity for a skill set that every single business in this community wants, I think is tremendous. And so I'm grateful that Dr. Williams and her team have, have gone after this opportunity and will be teaching this. I, I want to be there to help support as a, for sustainability because I don't want this to ever go away. The, the campus of Daytona State College has that, uh, that secret sauce that's come together to make all this 
possible and to make it all happen. And when you look at the team that Dr. Weems has uh, been so successful at arranging, uh, it, it, it is the team effort that's made the community of Daytona State College and therefore our Volusia County community so strong for these students who desire to go to the next level, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, they're going to graduate and then they're going to go to work in our community. And even if they don't stay in our community, wherever they go, they're going to go to work or start a business. So how great is it for them to carry with them the concepts and the mindset that I can achieve anything. And that's what we want to see happen.